Hi, Terry O'Reilly here, founder of OBP Australia. Today we're going to be looking at 10 tough questions that overseas born professionals need to be asking themselves. So stay tuned. Number one, what are you doing to expand your networks? How many people do you know in your profession in Australia? Many jobs are never advertised, so it's important to get access to the hidden job market. And you can do that by meeting and approaching people you've never met before, but through introductions usually, or other methods. So it's important to know what opportunities are coming up in your target companies. Number two, do you sound like the professional in your resume? Now, I've had employers say to me, he doesn't sound like the person in the CV. Now, this is a problem because you need to. It's one thing to be able to produce uh, an impressive document, a resume. It's another to be able to make that same impression in person when you meet somebody on the f in face to face, on the phone, uh, in an in incidental networking situation. Whatever it is, you need to be confident in being able to present as a professional. Are you impressive on the telephone? Uh, this is likely to be the first interaction you have with your prospective employer. Uh, telephone interviews are used in Australia to screen out those without adequate communication skills. People like to talk to you first before they invest the time in getting you in to have a face-to-face -face interview. Number four, do you have a professional voicemail message? Again, this could be the first impression you make when an employer calls. Uh, it's not that hard. Something simple and brief is all you need. Something like, hi, you've called Terry O'Reilly. Please leave a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Number five, are your application documents error free and impressive? So we're talking about your resume, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, key selection criteria response. Who is looking at these documents before you're sending them off for application? It's important to make sure that you are confident that you are presenting yourself in the best possible light through your documents. Number six, do you understand the company and the role? So do you know anything about the organization you're applying to? It's not enough just to send your resume and hope they are impressed with your skills and experience. It's important you know about where they sit in the market um, and how your skills and experience are relevant to what they do. It's important to know about the details of the job as well. If you don't know what the job involves, how can you convince somebody you can do it? So sometimes this means going that extra step of finding somebody in the company that you can speak to, uh, to get more information about the role, to get some inside information. Number seven, are you targeting the companies you want to work for? Do you know the players in the market, the, the companies that are relevant to your skill set? You need to find out who they are and how to approach them directly when there are no jobs advertised. Number eight, have you thought about applying for jobs in regional areas? Many overseas born professionals get their first break in towns outside of the major capital cities. So we're talking about places like Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, Shepparton, Wagga Wagga, uh, Newcastle, Townsville. There's a little bit less competition. Most people tend to want to live in a bigger city so it can be a good starting point and if you're a, an accountant, a public accountant, uh, an engineer, or in the health sector, these can be great opportunities to, to try to apply for work in regional areas as opposed to just Melbourne and Sydney. Number nine, how current are your skills? And how relevant are they to the Australian context? And how do you know who's giving you this information? It's important to talk to your professional peers again to find out where you sit in the market is there a gap in your skills is there something you can do to to enhance your prospects by perhaps further training or getting access to software that's required in your industry whatever it is you need to start talking to your peers as well and number 10 are you doing interview practice it's one thing to know what you've done and think you can explain it it's another to actually produce the language in an interview situation or on the phone. It's a different skill. It needs practice. 
So if you go into an interview and you're still thinking about your responses to questions, you haven't done enough practice. You need to approach the interview with confidence and with a free mind so that you can truly communicate with the other people in the room. So if you're thinking about your response, you're not making that connection. So practice will allow you to do this and it will free up your mind so that you can have uh, a good conversation with the, the interviewers during the interview. So if you're not confident you've got everything covered, contact us. We can have a free consultation to discuss your needs and what we can do for you. So go to the website, obpaustralia.com.au, click Inquire Now, and we'll get back to you within 24 hours. See you at the next video.